Oh yeah. Welcome back to Thick Riff Thursday. Today we are checking out the brand new library from Get Good Drums, the P5 Matt Halpern signature pack. And I am so stoked on this because I am in love with the drum sound from Periphery 5. My favorite Get Good Drums library is Modern and Massive. And this one is giving it a run for its money. This has the potential to be my new go-to writing template drum kit. Yeah, the low snare, the low tuned snare sounds so good. I mean, these shells, the, the reason Modern and Massive was my favorite library is because the shells were so perfect. And these shells are just as good, if not better, and there are so many more selections for cymbals. You've got two nice crashes here, and you've got two different crashes to select from. And you've got a crash ride over here. And you've got this nasty bell. I mean, this bell is offensive. I am going to abuse that. And you've got a nice splash over here on the left. I love high splashes. Got a huge china over here on the right. And then a nice loose, but still like the, the perfect balance between loose and tight, this stack over here. So I've already mixed this kit. Um, it sounds really good out of the box, but with Get Good Libraries, I like to do contacts multi-out option. That way I can just like mix it exactly how I want. I can run you through the processing later. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time doing that right now, but it's a really minimal mix. No more than three plugins on a track. Got to keep it simple for the writing template, but without further ado, let's write a riff. So I do have a riff in mind. It's kind of like... Fast paced, energetic riff, uh, kind of periphery like, funny enough. I didn't mean for it to be like a periphery vibe. It kind of just happened. All right, let's get a tempo. Like 144. Yeah, that feels perfect. Let's lay this down real quick. Two, three, four. I kind of want a second ending to that. Like second time around, I, I don't want that to be exactly the same. Maybe like a. Oh, that would be, that would be really cool actually. was sick. I was like totally improvising there at the end, but let me try to iron that out a little bit. By the way, if you guys want to download these Archetype Nolly presets, go to architecttigerstudios.com and you can also contact me about my mixing, mastering, and producing services. The link is in the description. That's awesome. Nailed it. Now that I have the scratch takes done, I can put the drums in. I don't have the mapping set up for the P5 kit over here on my pads yet. These are not at all what I want them to be. So I'm just gonna play it on the keyboard. <laughs> okay. I completely like screwed up the ending. Okay, I didn't I didn't get the snares in there. I can just copy and paste those in, I guess. Let's not do kicks and snares at the same time. We're adults. Just go ahead and glue those together because I'm gonna do symbols for the whole thing. Okay, now I definitely want the stack. Where's the stack? There it is. Whoops. 
All right, I, w I want the symbols to be a little more exciting. Okay, there's my splash. Definitely gonna wanna use that. Let me just get the first half. Okay, cool. There's the first half. Oh, that was perfect. Yes. That was perfect with those splashes at the end. Right there, I could hit the China. There we go. I think that would be cool. Nice. With the drums down, I can now get good takes with the guitar. That was really good, actually. Got to do that all down pick to make it like nice and tight. Oh, that was a really good take, I think. Don't really have the right... Um, didn't hit that big open power chord as, as hard as I wanted to. Oh, that was good. That was good. And then we'll just keep the rest of the other take. I kind of only hit the... <laughs> That was my sound check riff for so many years when I was playing shows. That was the only riff I would play for sound check. That and Limelight. That would get the old guys in the back with the beers and the denim vests. That would, that would get those guys going before I hit them with some nasty breakdowns. All right. Okay, between those last two takes, I think I got it. All right, let's program bass. <laughs> this is gonna be difficult. That's, that's so hard. Okay, let me move the microphone out of the way. I did it. Now I just need to shift L. I'm gonna force legato on all of it. I know it's not completely held out, but I'm just gonna cut out the, the spaces that I need. And that was wrong. Also, it needs quantized. And then these are gonna be like that, right? It's not gonna be pick all, it's gonna be hammer slash pull. There we go. Yeah, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut the notes where I need them cut. Big a ba bum bum bum. gonna rest for that that pick scrape back up two notes and what is that it's gonna be these are gonna be ham rounds okay they already are cool there we go Nice. After that, I'm feeling kind of just like a nasty breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Instead of pick scrapes, maybe harmonics. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Hey, if you guys are interested in watching extended edits of Thick Riff Thursday episodes and even downloading the mixed stems from the Thick Riff Thursday riffs, please consider clicking that join button down below and checking out the membership tiers I've made available. All right, back to the video. Oh God. For those last, that little triplet tail end, do all those on the snare. Let's, let's catch that china too. That's dope. Let's get that room turned up a little bit. Snare was sounding a little dead. There we go. All right, I think we need some production guitars in here too, because it's a little bit empty. That paired with a little bit of Valhalla would be nice. Maybe just like way in the back, just to give it a little, a little bit of depth. All right, now that we have the riffs, let's spice up the drums a little bit. We gotta spice up the drums. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. I want that to be a snare hit. Let's do like uh, a little fill out of this this riff. Okay, now we can't do the double crash there. <laughs> that would be impossible. Obviously, we gotta do a drum fill into the riff too. Let me think of something. That's it. I might be able to play it in actually. Two, three, four. Oh, I actually almost got it. Or no, I did get it. I was just a little late, but with the power of quantization, <laughs> it's perfect. Oh man, I'm actually so impressed that I got that. Okay, and then I want there to be a splash right on that first kick. You know, I love the splash. There it is. And then these last two kicks first one splash. Actually, no, first one ride. The bell. And then the second one splash so it's like oh that's gross i need the i need the overheads to be a little louder maybe a little brighter because it's kind of underwhelming when those crashes hit at the beginning before the final playthrough i said i would go through my processing for this again this was a very quick mix but I'm, I'm really happy with how it sounds so far. So yeah, I mean, like this kit is sounding so good. First off on my, um, on my drum bus, this is what I've got going on. So I'm hitting it with a slight compressor, this Pro C2 here. Really not doing anything crazy, like, <laughs> like maybe a dB of gain reduction um, coming from the Pro C2. Then I've got uh, some slate stuff. I've got this virtual mix bus plug-in on there, and I've got this um, 
compressor, the Monster, which is running in parallel, but it does so much. I have I have this. I mean, it's very. This is pretty much my processing for the Modern and Massive uh, library too. But yeah, this is doing so much of the heavy lifting. Listen to the listen to the A B when I when I turn this uh, parallel compression off. That's off, and then on again. And lastly, some slight EQ moves. Nothing crazy, like less than a dB there, 1.4 dBs up there, nothing crazy. And then the kick, I've got, you know, scooped like crazy. That's what you're supposed to do in metal, right? Snare. So this is, um, coming from contact, this is the snare top and bottom. I'm processing them uh, at the same time. So I've got some EQ going on, uh, some Pro C2. Uh, EQ, I'm just like, I'm just cutting out the low, uh, you know, the sub information that may be coming through um, completely unneeded there. Boosting the fundamental just a little bit, like one and a half dB. Oh no, two and a half. Sorry, I was looking at the Q. One, uh, two and a half almost dB boosting that, um, you know, the body main frequency of the snare. Then there's this ringy frequency that was annoying me. So I pulled that out. Um, some people like to go all the way down with it, but I feel like that sounds a little unnatural. So I like to pull it out. I mean, the ringiness is still part of the characteristic of the snare, you know? So I don't want to like completely get rid of that. It sounds unrealistic. Then just doing a, a pretty wide scoop around 750 and then just getting some of that sparkly top end up there. And then the toms, uh, weirdly, uh, <laughs> the way the way Contact's multi-out was set up, all the toms were on one output, which um, I wasn't crazy about, so I wanted them on separate outputs, but it was like an auto, it was like, it was just like GGD's like default, default multi-out setting. So I had to like add the two toms at the end and in the mixer, I can't put them next to each other, which drives me crazy. <laughs> so that sucks. I'll, I'll probably just take the time to, to reroute this stuff later on and update my P5 library template. But yeah, I mean, in the arrange view up here, they're all next to each other. The Tom, uh, that should be Rack Tom. Rack Tom, Floor Tom 1, Floor Tom 2. Those are all next to each other, but in the mixer view, they're not next to each other, which drives me insane. But the processing is very similar, slight EQ differences, um, just because the frequencies of each tom are going to be a little different. And then I've got a gate. So the gate, I just kind of wanted to control. It was it was like, without the gate, it was really rumbly. Um, and I, I just wanted to, to control the, the envelope, basically, of, of, the, of the tom. That's without the gate rings out for quite a while and with the gate this is what it sounds like i'm just like pulling down the decay a little bit here i think i do the floor tom in that fill too the floor times had a lot more ring to them so yeah that's what i'm doing with the toms eq wise i'll just go I'll just show you what I'm doing with the rack tom. And it, I'm, it's basically the same concept for the two floor toms. But um, yeah, I'm leaving this fundamental frequency alone pretty much and getting rid of any sub information that's down there. Scooping in the middle and then boosting that, uh, that stick attack. And that's really it. Nothing too crazy. Again, it's a writing template, so. I'm not gonna go insane with um, with the processing. Oh, you know what? Going back to the kick drum, I didn't show you what I was doing with Saturn. I've got Saturn on the kick. So I like I like the clean tube setting and the warm tape. So on the on the on the high end of Saturn, that's what the high end sounds like with the clean tube setting on it. And I'm kind of cranking the drive. Just 
just getting that clickiness, but like I wanted to be able to control the clickiness. I don't love my kick to have so much click coming through. So I can actually back that off a little bit. I'll show you the full drum mix with Saturn on the kick and then without. So that's with. I'm about to turn it off right here. Off. It's a little bit, just a little bit underwhelming. So yeah, I, I liked it. Um, I'm actually not doing that. I was kind of just thinking outside the uh, the writing template box there because I, I don't do that in my modern and massive um, template. Anyway, moving on to the room sound, I'm I'm kind of just doing some leveling. Uh, I'm not doing anything crazy. Most of the room, the purpose of the room for me is the snare, like the snare and the and the overhead have the overhead and the room mics have such a huge influence on the way the snare sounds like the close mic almost doesn't matter as as long as the close mic sounds decent and you're getting that top end and that bottom end your snare is going to be filled out if you've got the overheads and the rooms uh, at least just balanced out and not doing anything obnoxious. But within Giga Drums in contact, oh, whoops, that is Grove Bass. Um, NGGD within contact, I do have the snare room turned up like a lot. And, you know, that wouldn't be really, that, that wouldn't really be possible if, um, you know, you were mixing live drums because. Yeah, you can only really do that with samples. Um, so that's how uh, in the room channels, I have the snare so loud. For the overhead processing, I'm just like cutting out all that low end. I made it a little brighter earlier. Um, and then just slightly compressing to get, to get that snare under control on the overhead. And it's, it's possibly getting a little bit more sustain out of the cymbals, I think. Really, the, the hi-hat, splash, ride, and crash ride, I didn't do anything to. I really just leveled it out. I, I just got the levels to where I thought it sounded good, and I just let it go. Again, I don't want this to be very CPU heavy, so... That is the drum mix in a nutshell, and time for a final listen through. That's nasty. Huge thank you to Get Good Drums for sending me this library. These samples are incredible. I loved the P5 mix and the drum tones on that album. It really does have the potential to dethrone Modern and Massive as my main writing template sample library. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. I just hit 10,000 subscribers. I honestly never thought I would even get to 10,000 subscribers, so that's incredible. Have a great rest of your week. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.